The battlefield is an inherently hazardous place. The most obvious hazards are those that can kill or wound. Others are more subtle and far less hazardous, but for safety and health reasons, must still be recognized and responded to. Examples include depleted uranium, DU, or burning POL or plastics. As such, you need to know how to prevent or minimize needless exposures to battlefield DU contamination and how to respond safely and effectively. This program will explain what DU is, how it is used, and how to respond if you encounter it on the battlefield. You will also be able to recognize the situations when additional protective measures are necessary in order to keep exposures below U.S. safety standards and as low as reasonably achievable. Under specific conditions, intakes of DU can exceed U.S. safety standards. However, this does not mean that you will suffer any adverse health effects. In fact, adverse health effects may only occur for intakes that greatly exceed the U.S. safety standard. DU is a dense, slightly radioactive heavy metal used mainly in armor and armor-piercing munitions. It is derived from processing uranium and has properties similar to more familiar metals such as lead. DU is derived from uranium, a natural element found in the environment. Uranium is found in amounts large enough to be mined in several states. DU is chemically identical to natural uranium. However, after processing, DU has 40% less radioactivity. The primary concern from a health perspective is uranium's heavy metal rather than radiological properties. 50 years of intensive research on uranium have shown that natural uranium's health effects are comparable to those of other heavy metals, such as lead. Like lead and other heavy metals, uranium is present naturally in our bodies in trace amounts. However, as with all heavy metals, internalizing large amounts of uranium could affect your health. With uranium, the primary organ affected is the kidneys. Unfired DU munitions and intact DU armor emit very low levels of radiation. These emissions are well below U.S. safety standards and do not pose a hazard to soldiers working with or around DU munitions or M1 Abrams tanks with DU armor. This low-level radiation can be detected using a radiac meter. Soldiers working with DU munitions do not need to take any protective measures beyond those required for all munitions. Since intact DU armor is encased in steel, you do not need to take any additional protective measures. Why do we use DU in armor-piercing munitions? Because it is extremely dense and self-sharpening, giving DU munitions superior penetration at extended ranges. Kinetic energy penetrators are most often made from DU or tungsten. DU's density and ability to self-sharpen when it hits armor, rather than mushrooming like tungsten, makes it the best choice for armor-piercing kinetic energy rounds. The Army's M1A1 and M1A2 main battle tanks fire 120 millimeter DU rounds. Older M1 tanks fire 105 millimeter DU rounds. Army M2, M3 Bradley fighting vehicles fire 25 millimeter DU rounds. The Air Force, Marines, and Navy also use DU munitions. Air Force A-10 Thunderbolt II tank killer aircraft fire 30 millimeter DU rounds. Marine AV-8B Harriers fire 25 millimeter DU rounds. The Marines' main battle tanks also fire the 120 millimeter DU munition. The Navy shipboard phalanx gun system fires 20 millimeter DU rounds. Most DU rounds are discarding Sabo types. The projectile consists of a metal long rod penetrator with a sabo surrounding it. The sabo falls away from the penetrator as it flies toward the target. The penetrator rod is a long, thin dart with a sharp, non-DU metal nose cone and fins. Since the penetrator is a metal rod, it does not explode on impact with the targeted vehicle. However, 
it often causes secondary explosions if it hits onboard ammunition or fuel. In most cases, the nose cone and fins disintegrate upon impact. While most tank-fired DU penetrators are long and heavy, you might also find small caliber DU rounds fired from Bradley fighting vehicles or from U.S. aircraft. The DU penetrators from these rounds are small rods. A-10s tend to riddle their targets with bursts of fire. Each burst is a mix of armor piercing and high explosive ammunition, so it is likely that you'll see many spent rounds and or find armored vehicles with Swiss cheese perforations from multiple hits. U.S. forces do not use DU rounds for training. DU munitions are fired at selected tests and evaluation ranges, only in areas where hostilities are imminent or a very high readiness is required do U.S. forces operate combat vehicles uploaded with DU munitions. DU's density also makes it ideal for use in protective armor. U.S. M1A1 and M1A2 heavy armor tanks use DU armor encased in steel to increase the survivability of tanks and their crews. You can identify these tanks by the U at the end of the serial number on the turret. Depleted uranium is also used as counterweights on missiles and on some aircraft, though it's unlikely that you'll encounter it in these forms. You should also assume that any munitions carrier could contain DU rounds. Desert Storm saw the first widespread use of DU munitions and armor by U.S. forces. DU was extremely effective and played a major role in knocking out thousands of Iraqi combat vehicles and protecting our soldiers. DU's success during Desert Storm has led to its introduction into the arsenals of other countries, not all of them friendly. We must assume that DU will be used against us in future conflicts. There are a few specific situations where DU presents a hazard. We will address these situations and the protective measures for them. You could receive an intake of DU that exceeds U.S. safety standards if you are in, on, or near an armored combat vehicle at the time it is struck by DU munitions or an M1A1, A2 heavy armor tank when it is struck and breached by any munition, DU or non-DU. When a DU penetrator hits and breaches armor, especially DU armor, fragments, oxides, and particles are formed. These DU particles could be taken into the body through inhalation, ingestion, or wound contamination, or as embedded fragments. These DU particles settle out of the air soon after a munition strike. This greatly reduces the risk of later DU intake by inhalation. Remember that DU intakes exceeding U.S. safety standards do not mean that you will suffer any adverse health effects. If you respond to incidents or accidents involving DU, you can prevent or minimize personal exposures by taking simple protective measures in addition to standard field safety measures and hygiene. Since, under most circumstances, DU contamination does not pose a hazard, it is paramount that you continue operations, perform combat life-saving and other operations exactly as you would if DU was not involved. Notify the chain of command that you were in, on, or near a vehicle when it was struck. The following information should be recorded in the unit journal. That the vehicle crew compartment was breached. What personnel were in, on, or near the vehicle. And its location. If the crew compartment was breached by any munition, decontaminate the inside of the vehicle in accordance with Field Manual 3-5 when allowed by mission, enemy, terrain, troops, time available, and civilian considerations, commonly known as MET-TC. DU could present a hazard during decontamination of the vehicle's interior. Personnel engaged in cleanup and decontamination activities can inadvertently stir up DU particles that have settled inside the struck vehicle. These particles can become resuspended in the air and then be inhaled unless a protective mask is worn. The crew compartment of the vehicle must be decontaminated if any munitions penetrate the crew compartment 
or if rounds have burned inside the vehicle. These situations could create hazards such as DU or tungsten contamination, burned plastics, and burned fuel. In the process of decontaminating the crew compartment of a damaged vehicle, you could resuspend DU contamination as well as burned plastics, POL products, and tungsten contamination that had previously settled inside. While performing these actions, number one, some respiratory protection is necessary, such as a dust mask, protective mask, or other approved respirators. Two, cover exposed skin, including rolling down your sleeves and wearing gloves. An increase in mop is not required. Three, with your protective mask on, dust off your uniform after you dismount the vehicle. You may unmask after dusting off. Four, always observe standard field hygiene procedures, including washing your hands and face. These simple precautions will help protect you from inhaling or ingesting DU and other contaminants, transferring contamination from hand to mouth, or getting contaminants in cuts and abrasions. You may notice that some personnel wear additional protective equipment. This is because they spend a significant amount of their working day in destroyed or damaged vehicles that may contain DU contamination as well as burned plastics, POL products, and tungsten contamination. These personnel include battle damage assessment and repair teams and maintenance and recovery personnel. They are issued equipment such as respirators and coveralls to be used for daily work inside destroyed or damaged vehicles. A fourth situation in which DU could present a hazard is if you find penetrators or parts of penetrators. Because spent tungsten and DU penetrators can appear very similar, assume all penetrators you find are made from DU. You can determine when armor has been breached by a DU penetrator by using an AN-VDR2 or an AN-PDR77 radiac meter. These meters can also be used to determine whether a spent penetrator on the battlefield is DU. As with all battlefield debris, do not pick up penetrators or pieces of penetrators that you find on the battlefield. Notify your chain of command so they can coordinate a response. A final situation in which DU could present a hazard is if you are near, within 50 meters of, actively burning fires involving DU. If met TC permits, stay at least 50 meters from actively burning fires involving DU. Assume all armored combat vehicles and ammunition supply vehicles contain DU munitions. Never delay first aid or combat rescue because of DU. Conduct rescue and administer first aid in accordance with the soldier's manual of common tasks. The presence of DU on a wounded soldier poses no threat to those administering first aid. Notify your chain of command that the person could have injuries involving DU because additional medical tests could be required. Brief entries into DU contaminated crew compartments will not expose you to unsafe intakes of DU. It is important to note that DU and nuclear, biological, or chemical NBC hazards are completely different and require very different responses. If you are operating in an NBC environment, you must respond to the NBC hazard, a threat many times more serious than the low risk from DU. The protective measures taken in a depleted uranium environment will not protect you in an NBC environment. Depleted uranium superiority in munitions and armor has secured its place on the battlefield while unfired DU munitions and intact armor do not pose a health hazard, the potential exists for incidents or accidents involving DU. Accordingly, U.S. forces must have the training and preparation required to operate safely and effectively in the presence of battlefield DU contamination.